And uh, I just want to say welcome, everybody, to the first M8 meetup. Um, we'll be doing this every Saturday. I don't know how we'll structure it or if we need to structure it. So this is kind of our, you know, let's just see how this goes kind of thing. Let everybody open free chat and show either tips or tricks or help each other out. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if anybody would like to start first or how we want to go about doing this, but we can. If you want to jump in. Yeah, uh, so, sorry. Can I can I just get confirmation that my mic is working? My mic is it's working. working. Thank it's you. Noisy, but it's so yeah, I, 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 it's janky. So I guess the first thing we could talk about is you know the, the topics that we're currently discussing in general chat, um, mostly with like UI and UX stuff and onboarding for um, people who aren't as have the the previous experience that we have. I know Tim, you've been working on some potential UI additions to help with that. Yeah, in theory, at some point, I I should really just be concentrating on the hardware at this point to try to get the next set of units out. But yeah, there's obviously showing like what I'm thinking is if you hold down a key somewhere on the display, it'll if you hold down a key maybe long enough. I haven't implemented it yet, so I don't know how it'll work. But it'll it'll tell you what while you're holding that key down what the other keys do so i think that would be super helpful for people who are just getting started that's pretty cool um looks like we could also set up a little q a thing um someone's asking if they're going to be able to build their own hardware um yeah yes i don't think the, the hardware itself that um is going to be open sourced at all but at some point i know there's plans to open source the software once uh, things are cleaned up, manuals are made, um, and ideally costs are recouped. But yeah, I mean, I, I, could, I, could, I could talk about that briefly. Um, my response to that generally is if you could go on Mutable Instruments GitHub and make one of their products yourself, then you should be able to make an M8 yourself and potentially even easier, but that will probably come... More information about that will come um, once units are being sold, and I at least have some footing in how my production will work, as well as I have to comment all the code before I release that, and I, I want to work on user documentation, and obviously user documentation comes before doing any kind of uh, code release stuff. So, yeah, it will get there. It's just going to be a little while. Can we help by filling out the docs for you? That be useful. What my plan is currently is I want I want like a I mean I don't I, I'm not dissing anybody's work but I want like a kind of a, a single language unified document you know that's like the official kind of thing but all, all information that is in the user contributed document um, will be super helpful for me in translating anything and making sure that there is no missed points that are in the manual that's in the user contributed side of it now i don't know if i'll i have because i haven't got there yet because i haven't had the time but i don't know if i'm just going to edit our you know notion document um and that way everybody still contributes um because i want it to be open it should be so um i haven't really figured that out yet i barely know how to use notion so like i i just recently converted the getting started manual or the getting started guide I converted that into Notion just so I could learn Notion because <laughs> I have no idea how to properly use it. So um, we'll be looking at that more closely probably this coming month um, after I get more of the hardware stuff locked down. What is headless me? What did somebody ask something about headless? Can you explain what the headless M8 is exactly? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you could go and buy from Amazon or from pjrc.com. Uh, you could buy TNC 4.1, which is a little a little circuit board guy with a USB port on it, and you could flash um, the M8 source code to or the firmware to it, the compiled code 
to that TNC 4.1 then get a recommended SD card and actually start using M8 now, but it's going to just be a USB dongle essentially to your computer where you have to run software in order to hear the audio and to see the the video data. So um, it's really just, it, it happened because I wanted to have a virtual display for people who want to do streams or just like what we're going to do today <laughs> uh, without needing a video camera in order to capture the capture your video. Um, but once that was done, it's like, oh, I could just, you know, have this special edition of M8 for people that either can't afford the hardware or the hardware's not available. At least they have an option. Yeah, it's really handy for like streams and stuff, being able to show on and I can see what's going on. Yeah, and if anybody wants to try it out, um, you, you know, you, I, there's not much documentation on how to get started with that, but you could always go to the Discord, the Dirty Wave Discord, and ask there, and myself or somebody else will will help you out. Yeah. Chat, yeah, we don't have to answer we don't have to answer all these questions right now, but I, I can answer that real quick. Uh yeah, there'll the there's improvements basically to the next hardware reversion. But more importantly, it's just gonna be easier for me to produce because those first hundred units that I made had a large failure rate. Um and it was a lot of work on my part. So getting that all set up obviously takes a lot of time and some learning. So I'm glad that I did those first beta units because it allows us to work on the software more and get feedback um, as well as the learning process involved in pr production and getting all that started so it was totally worthwhile um, I think though uh, if we want to start like I don't know if anybody has something that they would like to share with their M8 but we, we could start doing that kind of stuff instead of answering questions this whole time I don't know how do you guys feel I mean I can do yes, time stretching choose. again Sounds rad. I say go for it. Wherever yeah, you... let's. We could start there. And uh, I, I, I'm gonna set up a little, a uh, little thing. I need, I need to find my little tiny mixer. Okay, um, so I did this a few days ago, and I'm going to try and do the same thing. We're not going to look at the bug. Um, the same thing that I did then, which was, which song? This one. Um, so... My goal for this one, which I guess, well, should I start? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to start. This will be my last thing because um, this sort of shows the culmination of um, all the different time stretching sort of tips and tricks that I've figured out. So rather than starting with that, I'm just going to start with um, a blank thing and show a couple different basic tips and things um, and then we'll go we'll go from there and I can show you the crazy thing that I did um, at the end. So to start with, you will need a sample instrument. And um, I will just pick a just some drum loop because that is the easiest to hear. Um, Actually, I'm going to try and pick a drum loop that's not perfect, that's not a perfect um, uh, four, four beat or multiple of four beat loop because that will show off one of the things that I have figured out. Um, so let's pick one. Yeah, so this, as you can hear, it's two measures, and then it has the downbeat of a third measure 
So I think technically it's 33 sixteenth notes long. Um, and that is not super useful. I mean, you could, I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm such a bad <laughs> uh, tutorializer. So the first thing you do um, is you set the length to zero and the play mode to forward loop which um, just basically loops this tiny little segment of the sample. Um, okay, cool, this is sounding and looking good on Twitch. Um, let me jump into, are we using the mate help me chat or are we using the chat with mates for general questions and stuff? I wanna make sure that I don't miss any. Um, I'll be watching it, but uh, I assume we should be using the help me chat, but you know, it's like okay. herding cats, I think. <laughs> sure. I will I'll keep an eye on the mate help me chat. Uh then anyway. So you can hear right now that this is just looping the very beginning this what I will I will be referring to these small loops as grains just for clarity of terminology. Um so you can hear right now that there's a small grain of the sample at the very beginning. Um that is being repeated, that looped infinitely. And um, if we wanted to um, hear different parts of the sample, we would change the start, or the loop start. Um, but if we wanted to do that with some sort of rhyme or reason um, in a certain amount of time, we could have the LFO do that for us. Um, so we want to start at the beginning. Uh, we want it to restart every time, and I like for it to, well, you can, you can either have retrig, which will make it loop all the way through um, infinitely, or you can have hold, which, will means it, which means it will loop from the beginning of the sample to the end of the sample. Um, and then we want it to start at the beginning and go to the end. So ramp up, this will start from the lowest loop start parameter, which is the beginning of the sample, to the highest loop start parameter, which is the end of the sample. Um, and if we remember, it was two measures plus one downbeat. So this technically should give us a perfect loop, which it does. Um, so that's one way to do it. But that means that if you have some blank, um, some some blank measures, and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to trigger this once, and I'm going to have it loop. It means that it's going to get to the end. Um, I have to make it loop. So it'll get to the end of the sample, and it'll play that kick drum. Why is this not? Shouldn't this be loop start, ramp up, retrigger? Should just be free running, right? At us after that. Free running is the zero position. Yeah, but we're not yet. Yeah, not free running just whenever, but it should loop in retrig, right? Yeah, it's it'll retrig. But shouldn't the shouldn't it start back at You know at what might be the issue is the um the play mode when you jog through phrases like that might be getting confused. Or not. <laughs> okay, well, um, ignoring that, um, let's just say that it does loop. Um, I can emulate that, actually. That would be like it going to here and happening right there. So, pretending that this LFO was looping, 
it would sound like this. And now your loop is off by a 16th note because your sample is not exactly um, a multiple of a full bar length. So if I wanted it to fit to here when looping regularly, I would go and change the length of it so that it is it is an actual um, exact multiple of the of a full bar and um, then I use the amount parameter here. So the amount parameter you can think about like amount FF means that the LFO from um, from zero to FF would go or for the LFO amplitude from minimum to maximum would scan through the entirety of the sample. And the more you decrease amount, the less of the sample it's going to be scanning through because of the less of this value it will actually be um, looking at. Let me, yeah, okay, my sample doesn't have silence at the end. Uh, just wanted to make sure it wasn't my fault. Um, the less of the loop start it'll be scanning through. So if you, if you set, um, amount, let's just say, to half. You could think about it as it's scanning through half here. So to, to figure out how much the depth should be to get it to repeat exactly every um, uh, 32 steps, I usually just play it. And you can hear the little double kick at the end of it. And so while that's looping, I'm gonna adjust the depth parameter until it loops perfectly. So there's still a tiny little bit of double kick right at the end. You can still barely hear it. And that's probably as close to a perfect loop as we're going to get. Um, I don't know why it's not looping. I guess I can try it again. You could also send me a bundle after this so I could see if it's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely will do that. Um, let me actually... Oh, there's no question mark. Okay. Um, what were we doing? So now this should be, even though the sample is a, a length that's kind of awkward for, for um, perfect looping because we've adjusted the depth parameter. Oh, is it doing it now? It's working now. Okay, so now we, you can hear that we have, even though we have a 33 step sample, we've set our loop, uh, our LFO to 32 steps and we've used the amount um, adjustment so that it's not it's just not scanning to the last note of the loop that we don't want to hear um, so of course now that you have it mapped correctly you can do whatever you want to it um, So the main adjustments here are, of course, time of the loop to playback. Um, I'll show you that it's tempo locked. Very handy. Um, so you have your speed here, which is in uh, 16th notes derived from the tempo. Um, as far as I know, that hasn't changed. Uh, you have 
detune, which will pitch shift the sample independent of time. And then you can now start to hear um, where that grain is looping. There's some artifacts that are happening um, as it loops. And so depending on what sample you use, you can adjust this uh, length parameter, which controls the size of the grain. And you can find one that works for your particular use case. So that sounds OK. Um, and I think the rest of these samples are the same length. Yeah. So it's pretty. Once you get the, once you get the fundamental um, mapping of, oh, is the display being weird? Is my touch designer lagging? Oh, my CPUs are not very happy right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, right, yeah, internet too, that's the thing. Yeah, let me just go, like, get a little bowl of CPUs for my computer. So that's the fundamental of how you take any sample and time stretch it. Let me do one that's not a drum loop, and then I'll move on to some little tricks. Um, and, of course, if anybody has any questions about anything I'm doing, let me know. Um, what was I doing? Or where was I? So we'll make a new sample. Um, a new sample. A new instrument with samples. Was there anything in here? No. Bass loops. No. Um, hmm. Was it in here? All right, well, let's just do that. Say you have um, a synth that you want to use for some melody line, but you hear that it changes um, speed when you change the pitch, which is just a nature of those two qualities being interrelated. Um, so I will look at when the, the oscilloscope at the, the top um, disappears. That means the sample has ended. So I will watch what step it's on at frequency C4 to to give me a close estimation of how long I should make my LFO to time stretch this. So it looks like it's disappearing right at step six. So I will make it six long because it's zero indexed on the row counter. So we'll go forward loop. We'll go length zero, um, no slices, loop start, ramp up. Retrig uh, hold on this one, and then we'll go six. Uh, and that sounds bad, which typically happens with pitch stuff. So that sounds kind of close to the original, but now. You have something that, even though it, it is crusty, um, it stays the same pitch. Uh, I was trying to find a bass sample, like a bass that that has like a an attack, um, a slow attack on the filter, so that like like a bass that's been sound designed specifically to fade in um, during the tail of a kick drum, uh, and if you had just a sample of that then trying to write a bass line with that, that important timing in how that track is going to be pumping. Yes, reverse bass. 
this is very important reverse base theory. If you're going to use base samples for your reverse base, um, the timing of that uh, slow attack is very important. So you can time stretch it like this and have a horrible melody that I'm about to write. You can hear that it stays the same uh, timing. Here, let me do it even worse and actually put a kick drum in there and it'll be horrible. Um, I guess I need to do more than once. Uh, it also means that if you have tempo changes, that it will stay the same relative length in the context of your song. So if you have, like if you use this Hoover sample and you're like, oh, I love how it lasts exactly one dotted fourth note, um, but then you're like, this song is a little bit too slow, let me increase it by like 50 BPM, you know that that Hoover sample is gonna still be a dotted quarter note um, in terms of the timbral shifts, not just any uh, envelopes that you've created um, or tables that you've done that are not tick FF because tick FF tables do not change their timing as you change tempo. Um, so those are the two different like super basic time stretching things that uh, I usually use when I'm when I need things to be locked to the tempo of whatever song I'm working on. I will load up a song that I will save this just in case. I need it later. Um, this one. So this is. Um, I think it's. I think it's. There's time stretching in this. I'm pretty sure. Oh, did I? I guess I turned it. I guess I turned it off. This is just slicing. Um, well, okay. So this is. This is like I guess the traditional way you would slice is you would just. You would take your sample and be like how many slices are there there's eight slices that I want and you can do that but then the way that I have come to uh, enjoy slicing much more is what is it I like to time stretch my samples um, and then do all of my slicing with uh, LFO trigger commands. So if I just play this, that's just the drum loop. Um, but with an LFO trigger command, you can choose where it starts. And that allows you to do um, slicing stuff without having to change the note to trigger a different slice. It getting, also means that getting a bit of uh, laggy screen again. I wonder, I uh, there's probably nothing you could do on your end. So I, maybe I shouldn't even no, bring it up. I mean, it looks, it looks fine in OBS. Um, we could just yeah, blame the internet. Yeah. It's probably discord. Yeah, that's, that's probably, probably what it is. Uh, is it, is it at least clear what I'm doing? If not, slow yeah i mean uh if, if you move too quickly then we won't we won't be able to follow you <laughs> okay i will I'll, I'll try to slow down thanks um so another benefit to doing it this way is um you can do sliced stuff and still keep it melodic because you don't have to use well you can do it melodic anyway but instead of having to use pitch commands you can just use the note commands in the sequencer. So it's a little bit quicker, I get, whoa. 
Did anybody else notice that my commands disappeared until I moved my cursor? What was that? Did you change instruments? Did I? I don't think so. Oh, look at that. The, uh, the commands go away when I cut. I, I saw that one time, but I've never been able to reproduce it, so... It, it has to figure out, like, when you're using an instrument-specific command and there's no instrument in the table or in the phrase, mm -hmm. then it won't know what commands oh. to display because it's instrument-dependent. Okay. Cool. So that's intended behavior. That makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> it, yeah. it is a behavior. Oh, but now my commands are gone here. Until I... Oh. Oh, but they're still working? But they're just not showing up. Okay. Maybe it should show, like, a question mark command. Fine. That sounds like a feature request. <laughs> Okay, well, my song still plays back normally, so that's fine with me. I'm going to reload my song. Okay. I, um, hmm. Is this a recent change? How have I never noticed this before? Um, I had to rewrite some of it, so it might be an unintentional consequence of some of the rewrite. Gotcha. I could probably, okay. uh, I could probably just assume the last or whatever is currently selected in the instrument screen and use that as reference when it doesn't have anything. That's probably mm. the right solution, but it's something I could look into. Can, can it view across, like, could it know that phrase... 0e is above it and look and see that zero that the most recent instrument that yeah, happened. Yeah, that, that, that's a possible solution. Oh, wait, it came back. What? I have a random logic in there, so it'll just randomly show it or not. Oh, see? All those conversations about random I'm kidding. Finally I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, um, last thing before I get into the weird use case um, that will be my last thing is uh, you can do, is it, you can do um, like Akai S950, S1000 style time stretching on the fly, which is really useful for me because you don't have to say please time stretch this and then wait five minutes for the sample to actually be time stretched. Um, and all you have to do for that is use the, what is this called? LFO frequency command um, to slow down the LFO, and that will time stretch it. Um, which is... Whoa. Yeah, so you can do handy things like that. Um, which is, and then you just have to make sure that you set it back to the original speed of the LFO when you want the samples to play back at the regular speed. And then was it was it KCAL B who said do a do a pitch slide and a and a time stretch at the same time? I think that was Brightface. Oh, that was Brightface. Thank you. Yeah. And there's some some classic jungle stuff there. Um, so, unless anybody has any questions about. The stuff that I've showed so far, I'm going to show the weird use case. 
that Sarn kind of gets into the weeds. No, that was I super handy like and, in, and informative. Um, like, uh, I, I can really see some use cases for, for a lot of my stabs and chord stuff where I don't want it to be super fast when I pitch it up. So that was actually really informative. Thank you for that. Yeah, and, and also you can, I, I haven't done this personally, but I'm guessing that you could use um, a length command to change the grain size per note in case you're getting, like if you're time stretching melodic stuff, obviously the loop, the loop length um, is like, makes a huge difference in the timbre of, of how it overlaps and stuff. And so you can actually use a loop length command per note if you need to tweak stuff. Um, oh, wow, I see how bad my screen is lagging on Twitch. This is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, you can use a loop length command to to make the loop length sound better for each individual note um, for doing melodic stuff. So um, a lot of credit goes to Mikey for this because he suggested I do this um, spoken word intro for a track that I made. And... Um, let me find the sample name. God is dead too. Of course, that's what it's called. Um, and I think that was me recreating it before, but I will recreate it once again. So I didn't want to write an intro because I don't like intros and Mikey suggested I do a spoken word intro. So I went, I pulled up a video of, um, some guy reading an excerpt of uh, Nietzsche, his book, God is Dead, or his short work, or whatever it is, and um, decided to see if I could take that raw recording and do all of the like pitch shifting and, and weird vocal processing that would make it suitable for a neurofunk D&B track in the mate um, without having to use a computer. And I was able to, but this, so this is how it sounds originally. How shall we comfort ourselves? The how shall we comfort ourselves? The how shall we comfort ourselves? The murderers of all murderers. What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned. So it's just a nerdy guy reading a book. Um, and that does not make for a very, um, broody drum and bass intro. So I wanted to pitch shift it, but I also wanted to time stretch it so that I knew exactly how, um, exactly how long it was going to be in play with that and make it really fit within the composition of my song. So I did, um, the first step, which is to go and make the length minimum. But then I noticed, oh, I didn't loop it. That is not a very good length it's not very useful length for um it's not a very useful length for for doing any sort of granular shifting and stuff because it's like a whole word so what i did to get around that because that's the minimum length is the length parameter is relative to the slices so i just went in and i think i made seven slices um and now you can see that 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 grain size is so much smaller. Um, and I think I worked it out so that seven slices, each slice should be four measures long and ramp up. Retrig. How shall we comfort ourselves? How shall we comfort yeah. ourselves? So now you can hear that it's close to the same speed, um, but the grain size is small enough that it's you can mess with how it. Shall we comfort ourselves? How 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 shall we comfort ourselves? While still retaining intelligibility. So, to have the whole thing play, all I do is how shall we do and that the first note, how shall we the, world is just the second note, and because I know that my LFO is going to scan through each slice with exactly, was it 64? Yeah, 64 steps, that if I put the next slice to be triggered exactly 65 steps later, 64 steps later or whatever, 
um, that it will be seamless. How shall we comfort ourselves the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death. Un so that allows me to basically do this indefinitely and create as many changes as I want. And as long as I have each slice triggered um, with the same, with the exact timing of the LFO between them, then there will be seamless playback. Um, and that really works for any length sample, which is really nice because this sample is. How shall we comfort ourselves? The murder is of all murder. Quite long. Um, so then I threw on, I think I threw on some chorus, some reverb, um. The world has yet owned, has bled to death under our mouth. And then, um, again, shout out to Mikey for suggesting that I duplicate it. And um, something about slicing, the note column will actually change the slice that plays. So if I have this slice playing, but then I change the note uh, column, it will actually play a different slice. That's useful, but it's also something to keep in mind. So if you need to transpose a sliced sample pitch-wise without changing the sample, you have to use a pitch command. Um, so we will go up, no, not up, down an octave, and then we don't want that to keep happening. So we'll just, that gives us another layer that is an octave lower, and together. How shall we comfort ourselves in the What a fun and mighty And then I think I added some. I think it was some sign clipping. So that's how I made um, this intro. God is dead. God remains dead. And when it kills him. So yeah, that's the extent. I might be forgetting a couple things here and there, but that's pretty much the extent of my time stretching knowledge from things that I have um, figured out so far. So. Uh, Does anybody have any questions, comments, remarks of any kind? Uh, I just thought it's really cool to um, <clears throat> kind of standardize the way that uh, like pitching and chopping is done. Because I, I remember like you know sort of in the old PC, uh, old school PC tracker days, you had to really just like kind of. I mean, it takes a lot of guesswork out of like trying to figure out where to find uh, offset points and stuff like that that are um, musical, right? So <clears throat> to just, just the idea of being able to use the LFO to sort of determine like, oh yeah, I want, I want to start like 50% of the way through the sample. It doesn't matter how long it is. Like, like I, I find that really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, Tim making the LFO timing in 16th notes is, it makes that math um, I would argue possible, some might say easier. I think you're also getting some questions in help me chat. Yeah, um, 10K, the, the bundle that I have up right now, is that the one that you are asking about? or one of the ones are from earlier because I can I can share whatever whatever bundles actually I might have that
Yeah, okay. The one, right. Your mic seems to have gone away. Yeah, I, I was about to say. Uh, oh, yeah. I, it would help if I turned it on. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have it bundled with the sliced stuff that I just showed off, so I'll slice it and I'll throw it in mate. Help me chat. Thanks for uh, showing us that. Sure. Yeah, thanks for everybody tuning in and giving feedback. It's always appreciated. Does anybody uh, want to take hold and show us something or? Um, I can show off something that I did on stream the other day. Uh, it's more sample related stuff. Um, let me get my screen shared here. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, what I have to share was, yeah, something I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, what it, what it involves is um, adding, using, using um, slices, and randomness to add a lot of extra variety to um, percussion, for example. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example here. So uh, let me make a new instrument. We're going to make a sample. And for this example, uh, I've already made, we're just going to use an almond break, OK, here. And just to show you what I've done, uh, if you can see here, I have standard almond break that I've processed in different ways, evenly spaced, so that when I chop them, uh, each slice is going to be the same one shot up and down an octave from each other. Um, so I know for a fact that this is 72 slices okay so we're gonna make this excuse me, uh 72 here okay so i'm gonna quickly just make something so you can let me speed this up a little bit 170 okay speed it up just a little bit so it sounds So if I were to take this and go up an octave, so that's pretty cool. Um, so you could do this with like a whole bunch of drum machine kits. So you could quickly mix and match like different one shots that have the same instrument, like a different bass drum. Like you have your 707, your 808, and your 909, and set them, arrange them in a way that they all they all line up like that. Um, so. Uh, along with that, we could use tables to add a little bit of randomness so it's not just the same loop over and over again. Uh, so in this instance, I'm going to move over to the tables and uh, using the, the end column, which in table is uh, a transpose, um, I'm just going to, every two steps, I'm just going to bring it up an octave. So I'll just do this real quick. And then I think um, that's the last octave I have, so I'm just going to make these here. Um, the next thing I want to do, because that's not going to work what I want it to do, I want it to, um, you know, it's going to, I want it to cycle through the options here. So we're going to change the table tick speed to zero, zero. What that does is um, every time the instrument here in this column is triggered, it'll allow this. Uh, this table to move forward one step. So if I play it now, okay. So you can see how it advances every time a new a new shot is being played. But uh, we still need to find a way to make it random. So um, I'm going to use a combination of the hop command, which um, normally hop command. You, it tells you to jump to 
this step in the table. So if I were to if I were to just leave it here, for example, actually bring it down here so it's easier to see, and I set it to zero zero. Once it hits uh, gets down here, it's gonna jump back up. So, and if I were to set this, for example, to six. So now that we understand that that's how hop is working, we can actually set hop zero zero at the top. And I know that sounds weird because you think, okay, well, it's just going to be stuck up here. Um, but if I add random, and we're going to make it really random, um, just by filling up this whole column here, now when I press play, it should randomly bounce between any of these steps. And the having it filled out here is just to ensure that um, the random is always triggered. Um, because otherwise, what will happen is if I just have the one random, it's going to randomly pick a step and then continue advancing. Uh, so we're going to fill this back out. So now if I press play. So it's a pretty cool way to like have some fast variety without having to to have to think about it so hard. Um, and then obviously uh, another thing you could do to add variety is to um, use a chance command. So what I will do is I'm gonna add chance. And the way chance works in a phrase is that you have two values. It denotes the chance of something to the left of it and to the right of it in the row. So uh, each value goes from zero to F. So zero being 0% 0 and F being 100%. So if you wanted something that was going to happen 50% of the time, you would set it to eight. Um, so in this case, for example, I want this snare, I want it to sometimes re-trigger. And the re-trigger just gives it kind of a glitchy stutter depending on the speed you set. So now when this plays, yeah. Uh, you, you. Yeah. Let's try this again. Yeah. But it's not. It's not always. It doesn't always happen. And you can obviously you can increase or decrease the the chance of that happening, um, just by adjusting the ch the chance. And if you wanted to have additional effects, you know, obviously you could put something else next to it. Um, and that's nice. So then you could have the same loop over and over again. You have an, a basic idea of the rhythm you want it to be, but you want to have just a little extra texture, um, just using some randomness. Um, I could show uh, an actual case use here. Um, this one here. Uh, this song is in in a, uh, a six four, but as you can see here, uh, I didn't use the the octave chopping, but um, a lot of this is pretty much the same pattern over and over again just with different variations of chance and retrigger and it just and if i just leave this over and over again you'll hear that it's just every time it's just a little different and i i suppose if you really wanted to you could probably throw in uh the retriggers and a random command in the table, and then it would randomly select a retrigger value, or you could do that with pitch or what have you. But um, that way, you can fill up a whole column of the same the same uh, chain, the same phrases, without it being too repetitive. You know, you I know when you're listening to your own track, you can kind of hear when you're kind of using and abusing looped sections. So this allows it to just let the the M8 work it out for you and make the whole track feel very organic and flowing and not so um, loopy, I guess, if that's what you're going for. So that's that's how you do that. So um, that's that's basically all I had to show regarding that. Um, I just I think it's a really cool underutilized function um, and a really quick way to to really add some variety when you're feeling kind of loop locked in a pattern and you don't know what to do, just let the inmate uh, do it for you. So uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Um, unless somebody has any questions regarding it. That's, that's all I've got at the moment. Play it some more.
Oh, you want to hear more of the track? Uh, I have this this track up on on YouTube. This is the um, the track I made for my friend Jackson from online. It's a remix of his. Uh, I made this like uh, using an uh, uh, I think two months ago. But... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that, uh, if you want to hear the rest of that track, just click on the link. Thank, thanks, thanks again. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'll try to think of some more cool things that I could to, uh, bring to this for, for next week. Thank you. That's an amazing track. Thank you so much for sharing that technique. Would anybody else like to demo or show any tips or tricks or anything? I know we're so well organized this time around, but figured it was easier Yo. just to do a free for all. What up? What's up? What's going on? Uh, I have a, a a little tiny explanation on doing um, fairly simple polyrhythms. If anybody's interested. Oh please, please. Sweet. Let me. All right, I'm not set up because I've just been making little examples I meet right now. Where's my OBS? I gotta plug in the mate. That would be handy. Oh. That's an awful sound, isn't it? Pretty much. No, it sounded sound, sound great. Oh. Hey, hold on. Let's see. Um oh shit, how do I do this then? So I got my mic into my mixer, my mate into. Hold on. Do you want to figure it out and I could just demo something real quick while you do so? Yeah, yeah. that'll be good. Cool. Okay. okay, I'll try to demo something. Let's see. Set this up. Boop. So I guess I will go over this kind of newer feature. I don't remember when I did this, but it's um, Groove Zero. So maybe I should uh, explain Groove real quick. So on a phrase, you have you know 16 steps. Uh, each step is, because we're dealing with a tracker that is 24 steps per quarter note, um, that means there's six basically ticks per step. And Groove allows you to set up how many ticks per step you want in a phrase. So right right now you could see it's going from, you know, hold on, let me turn down the volume of my mate real quick. So you could see it um, stepping through these two steps, um, which if I did a really quick demo, Let's do a swing using the groove.
So now it's shuffling between these, you know, seven ticks per step and five ticks per step, thus giving us a swing, or eight four even. So one of the new things I added was um, you could have a tick be zero. And what this does is it'll skip that st whatever step the tick lands on. Um, let me do, set this to six. So it's actually it's actually rolling through zero, but it's skipping whatever step was landed on zero. And why this is useful is a couple things. One is if you had a song that you wanted to have in three four timing, the normal way is to put a hop um, to shorten the length of the phrase to three four. So there's only three, you know, with this hop here, it's only three four timing. Um, but instead of doing that for every single phrase, what you could do is just in your groove, set the last four ticks to zero, and that'll do the same thing. Which means you don't have to put a hop in every single phrase if you don't want to. Um, another thing that allows is um, to do triplets. So let me get rid of that and set up a triplet grid. Just that easy. It's basically skipping. It's skipping the three, the seven, the B, and the F row, but it's allowing these to go into triplets. Uh, you know, there's other ways of doing that. Obviously, you could use a um, delay command on the note to do triplets. Um, there's a variety of ways of doing triplets. This is just kind of an easy way, especially because you could you know, set a groove per every track, you know, so you could have your groove one be regular. Um, and then you could set a groove command to be a triplet. And of course that's, sh you know, every, ev in case you don't know, every track can have its own groove, which enables a lot of funkery between all of your, your tracks. So that's my little demo. So, be aware that groove zero is a thing. It just means it'll skip the row in the phrase. Okay, yeah, yeah that rules. Thank you so much for showing. I, I know you, I remember you implementing it, but I didn't quite grasp what, how it worked. So now that I know, that's going to come in super handy. So donut shoes, are you, you about ready? Uh, I'm curious, how did you guys all uh, figure out how to route your uh, mic audio and your mate audio so into Discord so it wasn't all fucky? I have everything plugged into an external mixer going into my interface. Right, that's what I was doing, but then as soon as I... So yeah, I, have, I had the, um, the mate uh, plugged into my mixer, but then as soon as I plugged in the USB, that's what, that's what was causing that awful noise. Oh, I have a uh, I have a loop a, isolator, uh... ground loop isolator. Oh, uh, see, that's what I don't have. Wait, Tim, is that running the mic through a mixer? Yeah. So mic and M8 going through the mixer. Yeah. Uh, wait. So then why isn't it getting picked up? That's no, it was getting no. The the mate was getting picked up. It, I that would be fine. The only problem is if I want to also share the screen, I have to plug it in with the USB, and that was causing like ground hum issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Anybody got solutions besides Mike's uh, ground loop isolator? In which case, I might have to postpone a little demo or make just a video of it and post it later. I mean, we could probably just deal with the noise. I don't know if it would be that bad, would it? It's not the end of the world. Okay, was it terrible? <laughs> Here, uh, we, just we to were, remind you all. We were joking uh, about when you were plugging things in, it got pretty <laughs> noisy. Yeah, yeah. So that's awful. I can maybe high pass it, or low pass it, I mean. Just to mitigate it, it'll, it'll, it'll sound all, all terrible, but it shouldn't matter. Okay, we're going to go with it, if you're all cool with that. Um, we'll deal with it. Let's give it a shot. Cool. So then, how do I screen share? 
Um, are you guys doing it with camera or screen share? I don't know what I'm doing. The easiest way is just to do it with screen share. Um, I did yeah, okay. it with cam. I did it with a virtual cam, but my setup's really funky. Right. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So screen share. Go live with that. All right. Can you all can you all see that? Yes. Yeah, it looks good. Cool. Okay, let's go then. All right. So this is about doing uh, polyrhythms. Uh, and I'm sure that there's a bunch of ways to do this, and I'm sure that you could get even better uh, results with uh, grooves. Uh, this is kind of like uh, a brute force way of doing it. Um, so, oh, is it not? Okay, I need to reset the touch designer thing. Okay, here we go. Um, so uh, the first lesson here is really simple because it's gonna involve two uh two chains um and uh it's all gonna it's all gonna happen in uh in one chain in one line effectively in the phrases uh and so this is just a simple uh three four three over four uh rhythm and it sounds like this oops i need to maybe turn that up Right, so this is, you know, I'm sure a lot of you know this kind of rhythm, three, uh, three over four. And the way it's done is uh, when you're working in trackers and trying to do uh, polyrhythms like this, uh, the simplest way to get what you're looking for is uh, multiply the two numbers that you're, that you're trying to uh, put over each other together. And that's gonna be the, uh, the, the number of total lines for that kind of cycle that it's going to need. Uh, so for three over four, uh, it needs to be a, uh, it needs to be a total of 12 lines, uh, which I have, uh, you can see I got a hop here um, on the, I guess that's the 13th line, right? Uh, so that it'll, it'll loop back around uh, and same for this, for the second phrase. Uh, and then it just, it's, it's as simple as, um, copy and pasting each uh, note input the opposite number of lines that you want the beat to be. So, for example, uh, this is my kick drum. It's uh, it's the three in my three over four, right? And uh, so, what I needed to do was copy the uh, copy the note and uh the three empty lines underneath it so for a total of four lines uh to fit inside the 12 lines that i dedicated to the total cycle and then the opposite for uh my four in the three over four which is copying three lines and pasting it within the 12 uh 12 lines for the cycle um and so this is a fairly simple uh polyrhythm uh and but you can use this uh multiplication technique to uh tackle even crazier uh polyrhythms for example here i have what is it um this is going to be i believe uh i did five over seven and we can take a listen to it real quick I have the pitch up for when it, the cycle comes back around. Uh, when you're doing this kind of thing, uh, the tempo marking kind of like vanishes because you're messing around with the lines per beat too much uh, that uh, where it would normally be, what, four lines per beat, right? If we're using groove six and we're at tempo 120, you know, that's going to translate as soon as we mess around with the lines per beat the tempo kind of gets thrown out the window so uh if you want uh to if you want it to be you're, you're gonna have to just mess with the tempo if you want it to be faster this is a pretty slow one so turn that up more. Sorry, 
that's too loud. Um, so I don't know if you can tell if that is uh, five over seven or not. Um, but uh, to go into detail of how I did this, uh, basically I did the same thing uh, as I did above with the uh, three over four and multiplying them together to get a total number of 12 lines per cycle. Uh, this, I would have to multiply five over seven, uh, five and seven together because I'm doing a five over seven polyrhythm, uh, which is going to give me 35 total lines per cycle. And so that gets tricky uh, when we're locked into these uh, 16 line uh, phrases, uh, which means that you're going to have to um, uh, put this polyrhythm like over multiple phrases. And so it's just as simple as counting out the lines uh you know as you can see here it gets cut off at the bottom uh but i'm still going to do one two three four five six seven and so of course that is for my five beat person my five beat cycle kick drum oops and then of course uh, on my last phrase here it kind of spills over and i need a hop command uh to bring me back to the start uh, but of course, you can see uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for each uh, for each beat. And then on the other side with the snare, um, you're it's the same thing. Oh, why do I have? Oh, groove doesn't really matter. I was messing around with uh, groove things, and we'll get we'll get to that in a second because then because we can we can kind of apply this to uh, ticks per beat instead of uh, lines per cycle, ticks per beat uh, to do uh, like tuplets and stuff, which I have an example of later. Um, and so I don't know if any of this is making sense, and I'm sorry if I'm making this confusing because I'm not very good at explaining myself. But um, yeah, uh, it's as simple as uh, deciding on what kind of polyrhythm you want. Uh, and you can further... Uh, you can do this further with even more complicated uh, polyrhythms via if like you say you want like three over eight over seven or three over seven over eight or something. You're going to have to multiply all three of those together um, to get your master uh, lines per cycle. Uh, and uh, I think I might be confusing myself now. But there's ways to do it, and I'll probably make a more concise video about this and uh, and with my thoughts better organized uh, and share it with you all. Uh, and then, then oop, I can share the song file, yes. Um, and for this uh, last little example, I have uh, doing it um, doing a similar thing for uh, tuplets uh, and. Uh, when you're dealing with tuplets, it's not really the same as a polyrhythm, which is usually over a long uh, period of time. Tuplets are usually per beat. So we're no longer talking about lines per cycle. We're talking about ticks per beat. So you have to think about the individual, or the rather the invisible lines in between each line that are the ticks. Um, but you get a, uh, you have a same, you have a similar process uh, that you do. Uh, in fact, it might even be easier. Uh, so what I do is uh, I've got two grooves here. I've got a groove that is just five uh, line, five ticks per line, and a groove. Oops, a groove that is uh, four ticks per line. And um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I want it to be. Uh, I basically want to have a quintuplet in my in my song, and the way I'm going to do that. Um, is uh, fit five notes uh, in the span of one beat. Uh, and I do that by uh, having, again, this kind of like rule of opposites number of ticks uh, per, per, uh, per line so that they are equal. Now, uh, I do I have something kind of silly here, uh, uh, which is I'm hopping really, really quickly. Uh, so, like, economy be damned, because uh, now it's like it's a phrase per beat at the moment. You could uh, extend this a little bit. Uh, go maybe, yeah, just do that right now. Uh, 
and then put a hop command here. That way you're not like eating up all your phrases. Uh, but the, let's see. Make sure I get this right. Okay. Uh, but the result of having, uh, you can see here that, uh, like I said, my, this groove was uh, four ticks per line. Uh, and I have this spanning over five lines, which is going to be 20 total ticks. Uh, where versus over here, I have five ticks per line spanning over four total lines, which is still 20 ticks per beat. Uh, and that's how we get this. It's a little fast. So if you can tell uh, that we've then got uh, this kind of quintuplet uh, phrase happening uh, in this more straightforward four to the floor or rather kick kick snare uh, thing. And if we wanted to maybe expand this to be uh, septuplets, then what I might do is uh, change this groove to seven. So I have it as uh, seven lines uh, per per beat or seven lines. Yeah, seven, li seven ticks per line uh and then i can just change this to be a seven oops a seven note um pattern still with groove four because what again what i'm trying to do is fit uh this number of ticks or this number of notes within this um this length beat, uh, and these are going to total. Uh, these are going to add up. Uh, four four ticks per line over seven lines will be what's that? Twenty eight, right? Twenty eight. Um, right? Am I an idiot? Twenty eight. Uh, and seven ticks per line over four lines will be also twenty eight. Did I, or did I screw that up entirely? Oh, I know what I did wrong. I got I confused myself. I kind of just messed this. Uh... I made it unclear. There we go. That's it. Uh, I'm sure I made that way more confusing uh, than uh, it needed to be. Um, but if there are any questions, I can probably field them and maybe make things more understandable. Or read the check, which I wasn't doing. Questions, anybody? like there might be some chat questions coming up sure what is a polyrhythm that's a really good question uh a polyrhythm uh is when it is, is is essentially um fitting two uh patterns of notes together um you know like even like two over four is technically a polyrhythm, right? Because it's, you're, uh, you're fitting two, you're, you know, you're fitting four beats uh, in the same amount of time that it takes for two beats to happen or four notes to two notes. Um, and uh, it gets, it gets complicated when you are trying to do uh, higher uh magnitudes of 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 note repetitions uh per per cycle um yeah two rhythms playing at once thanks <laughs> thanks sam <laughs> um yeah uh and i i was hoping that i could have had some uh crazy uh like three over five over 27 kind of polyrhythm um set up in here but it was kind of breaking my brain 
when you start thinking about polyrhythms, it tends to break your brain a little bit. Um, but I, I think uh, maybe when I make a better video that explains this, um, I'll be able to uh, better explain how it's it's really just a lot of math and a lot of just multiplication and division uh, and, and, and rewiring your brain to think a certain way. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. Where are the drummers? So yeah, that's 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 the extent of uh, of of my little poly, my dis my disjointed polyrhythm uh, lesson. And if anyone has any specific questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me, and I can maybe help you uh, uh, cover this topic. It's it it. I will say uh, this kind of work is a lot easier on something like Renoise. Uh, because you can expand the number of lines per beat and it's very malleable and elastic uh, compared to more like LSDJ or Mate style trackers, which are kind of locked into the screens. And like I said, I'm sure that there's uh, better, there, there might even be better ways to do this using grooves uh, or using tables maybe. Um, and uh, these, these are all topics that maybe we can explore in the future. Yeah. Uh, thanks. If unless there's more questions, thank you all for coming to my mate talk. Thanks so much for showing us. Okay, who's up next? Anybody want to go? Nobody. I can try. Do it. Try okay. it, try I, it try I haven't. Uh, I haven't tried actually setting up the screen stuff, but hopefully this works. Uh, let's see here. Uh huh. Just give me a second here. Uh, I I didn't have a lot to share. Uh, just uh, just a quick tip, I guess, or mainly for the benefit of the 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 newer users or people who don't have the unit yet who are still trying like on the fence for whatever reason okay all right um and can you can you guys hear this is that coming through okay nope no i'm not hearing you it's not okay well let me just see if i can do, do, do. uh input device oh wait uh would i have to set the screen like the stream to a different input there's a but then you don't have to microphone do input right uh well i'm i'm connecting over usb right so um uh, let's see here sure you would need a way to mix the two signals into discord oh okay well then i'm on the wrong computer then <laughs> it's on my other setup but that's okay you just show us anyways and don't talk. Just sure. use uh just draw gestures with the, the M8 cursor and we will transcribe it. <laughs> no, it's okay. I can I can just show it next time then. I'm not gonna try and okay. muddle through it. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's basically all I got anyways, is just um beginner tips and tricks. Yeah, if anyone has any any technical questions for how to execute something, maybe that's something we can try and cover. If someone feels maybe they just got the M8 and are lost with a functionality or something, uh, I'd be happy to try to go over that. I could also go over um, basic FM at some point too, if we want. That's what I was going to suggest. Does anybody have any FM tutorials they want to cover? Because that would be cool. So I, I could go over some basic FM stuff, like super ultra basic, like let's not get too carried away. Um, and if anybody has any questions in regards to anything whatsoever, just feel free to spam any of the chats. And that way, once I'm done with that, we could go through and maybe help anybody out. Let me get set up.
Okay. Hopefully this still works. Beep, beep. Were there any uh, questions in the Twitch chat? I just created a new project and using the new FM synth. I think that sounds okay. Maybe I'm a little quiet. Hold on. All right. So. Let's see. I'm going to go over some super ultra basic uses of the FM synth in ways that do not make it FM. One way is that in this default state, this is just straight default, you could turn up the feedback of, of operator D, which is the final output of the FM synth. Like if I turn down the level here, that's actually all it is. If I turn this guy up, you start getting a, a saw wave instead of a whatever it was before. If I also add in um, operator C, um, operator C currently is um, it's modulating the input frequency of, of D of this guy. So if I turn this one up too, you'll get even a better saw wave. So now it's just a straight up just saw wave synth at that point. Another thing you could do is you could turn up the ratio of C. And it's basically a square wave. You'd probably add clipping too if you want. Super square wave. But that that's one basic usage of, of not actually doing FM, but just using it as a basic generator. There's no real advantage of doing that, except for you could start tweaking these other ratios or levels and in, in these other operators and start really making it sound bizarre. Um, another super basic usage of the FM synth is, let me do a new one from scratch. And I'm gonna go to the last algorithm. And this is basically just four oscillators now a plus b plus c plus d there's no multiple no there's no frequency modulation or anything crazy but what this would allow is if you set these modulators to pitch so they're there i don't know if i should go over these but um basically uh these mod, mod rows is a way for you to map different parameters of each operator to one of four of these mods. And once you map it to one of these mods, you could then use an envelope to control it or a, a effects command or anything else. But without mapping it to anything, you can't really control it in real time. So let's, I'm gonna use, so there, uh, I should go through these. So there's only four different mappings that you could use per operator, right? There's level, which controls this guy. There's ratio, which adds to the current ratio. There's pitch, which is pitch and semitones. And then there's feedback, which controls this little feedback of this operator. And you could actually hear them if, let's say, if I s assign the first envelope to mod one. And then I turn, let's see, it's going to feedback. I turn up the feedback. It's pretty quiet, but you can hear what it's trying to do here. Let me make this decay longer. You hear that little meow in the, in the distant background because there's four of these guys being mixed together. Turn up just this one, whoa. Right, so ratio, level. I'm gonna set them all to pitch. So I'm gonna undo all this junk that I already did. I'm gonna map all four of these to pitch. Bear with me. I'm gonna set them all to a different modulator. So now, well, you don't need to do all four actually. I'll leave this one alone. 
so now these these three mods um, control in semitones the pitch of these three guys. Um, and then what, what that would do, let me clear this envelope, is um, allow you to set up chords using semitones. Let me bring up. Um, and if I want them to be si saw waves, like I showed in the other thing, where I, you turn up the feedback to 80, it turned into a, almost a saw wave. I'm doing the same thing here. So now we have a chord of saw waves. Let me bring this to three. So now that's like a minor, basic minor chord. But I could sequence it now uh, between major and minor. So you basically have uh, four, four independent notes for this one synth engine to do chords, which is pretty convenient. Um, maybe at another point I'll go through these different crazy algorithms um, because there's a way that I like. Here, let me show you some stuff. I've been um, converting DX7 patches into M8 by using a using a plugin, you know, with the old DX7 patch, and then uh, transcribing it into M8. But that's kind of a bigger topic that would take longer, I think, to describe than right now. But let's lately bass. Um, vibe. Mm. What's my favorite? Oh yeah, tubular bells. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's uh, my presentation for the moment. Now, do we have questions? Does anybody have anything to show or any questions that we should go over? I got some chat questions. Hmm. Are the ops all signed? Yes, they all ops are, at least currently. I couldn't figure out a way to, to fit more information in that single screen. Um, but they're all sine waves, but each one has its own feedback. So you could basically convert any of them to basically a saw wave for all intents and purposes. Can you quickly show how noise is done? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I could do that. If you guys want to see that. Yes, please. Okay. Just setting up again. Switching hats. Okay, how do we do noise? Let me just clear everything out again so I don't get lost. So the key with noise is to have something modulating the pitch enough so it just turns into a garbage. Um, at least that's how I think of it. Oops. So I'm gonna try to start doing that now. Maybe, actually you could do it with one single oscillator, I think. So let me try that first. I'm gonna turn down the level of these guys. So the only thing you're hearing right now is just operator D with no modulation input. Yeah, so you have to, it gets pretty loud. You see there, that pretty much did it. Not terribly hard. Another way is uh, I could start mixing in this guy so it starts modulating the pitch of that one. I guess the key is with this process is to try to make it so you can't hear that original tone. 
So you're just basically mixing everything enough so you don't you don't have a there's not a clear tone to it. That's pretty much it. Not terribly hard. Cool, thanks. Do we have more questions in chat? I haven't been watching. There were some questions, but it looks like we all jumped on it at the exact same time. <laughs> but now we have nothing to talk about. No, I'm kidding. Uh, 10K asked well, if the FM instruments presets will ship on the next units. Yeah, I think that's something that to talk about. Um, there should be a default. Obviously, I sent the initial small run of M8s with a you know default samples and some presets in there, but I didn't have enough time to make a full library of demos and you know instruments and samples and all that stuff. So obviously, with the next set of units it being a larger batch, um, that is essential. So yeah, I want to have a lot of FM presets done. I want to have a lot of presets in general across all the synths kind of in there. Um, and I think if anybody wants to contribute, it will be an open contribute collab if you want to. Um, you know, obviously, since there's money involved in people placing orders on these units, like, you know, I don't, I'm not going to ask the community to do my work for me, <laughs> you know. So, but if you want to contribute, that would be also, that would be also awesome. Is there anything else that we can do to help expedite what need what's left to be done besides hardware stuff like uh, manual doing more manual stuff or anything like that? I mean, there is the the user contributed manual. Um, that's definitely helpful. Um, but I think you know everybody here has been pretty amazing on Discord helping you know helping people and, and of course elsewhere, because I'm sure whenever anybody posts anything on <laughs> social media, the first question is always like, when are, when can I buy this? You know? Um, but as far as I'm concerned, what I need to do is just not, not get trapped into keep working on the software. Like I have been, um, I've been obviously working on the hardware reversion while at the same time, kind of waiting for, um, solutions on the T teensy issue with uh, doing a larger scale production. Um, but that's starting, I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel with that. So now I'm just trying to, you know, finalize the hardware changes, you know, the physical changes and all that. But no, I mean, you guys, you guys have been amazing. Like this community has been excellent. So I think that's more than enough. Uh, how was the feedback on, on um, uh, basically the like form factor stuff? Because you you put out a quick survey about like you know how many people want you know you know modular rig specific um, you know functionality or, or, or devices. Yeah, I don't I don't know if any. Are you talking about the three um, D render that I did with the kind of bumper around the unit? Yeah, because you were concerned about whether it would have fit or not, or, you know, um, be useful for people who have modular rigs. Yeah, I, I, I asked on Patreon for people's input, but um, I think I think polls are generally better for a lot of people because, you know, if you have a lot of people on one side saying one thing, then the person that doesn't think that way may might not want to express their opinion, like, openly like that. So I might try running a poll. But the general response on Patreon has been extremely positive about the, you know, the aluminum kind of bumper around the unit. I think it looks, I think it looks pretty great. But um, I think that is a major concern is is how many people are out there that are really super concerned about it perfectly mounting flush in a Eurorack module. Um, there was maybe one or two comments that I got that were, you know, almost a deal breaker, if not a deal breaker. Um, but then I explained to him that you could, 
you know, you could use, um, you could use, what do you call them? The, the mount, the spacers, uh, offsets to, to lift. So that way that's not perfectly flush with the, the case. Um, standoffs, standoffs there, that is the word I was looking for. So you could use standoffs to kind of get around that issue. Um, and then one of the people seemed okay with that as a solution. Um, but all that basically means is I still need to have with that aluminum body, it needs to have th threaded M3 holes in those four corners that go all the way through the unit. So that way you could, you know, throw a screw all the way through it and mount it to something. Um, if I didn't have that thread go all the way through, then that would totally, you know, then you couldn't mount it at all unless you use sticky tape or something ridiculous. So I think I'll keep the threads there just because it allows people to mount it if they want to. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, 10K says, I don't understand wanting to mount it. Um, I originally wanted to mount it, actually. Um, I wanted, you know, in a perfect live set kind of scenario, like if you had a I don't know, 100 HP skiff or something, you could have like two M8s, one on the far left, one on the far right, and then like a little mixer and a little filter in the middle of it, and it'd be a sweet little, you know, live rig setup. Um, but the more I started using M8, through the process, the more I realized that like, I don't need all that. And it's so convenient to just grab it. Um, even if you're on stage and you grab it, like that's even more things you could do on, on stage. So I'm not really sold on that idea anymore personally, but if other people are, since I did say it was going to be your rack compatible, you know, I don't know if it's deal breaker. So I need to figure that out. So does anybody have any more questions or tips or tricks or? Does anybody have any uh, songs that they're working on that they want to show off? Or I think that would be neat if anybody wanted to show either some works in progress or even some complete songs. Yeah, uh, I'm working on a couple of remixes, but uh, I can wait since I already demoed something. You already went. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would I'd love to see yeah more people's music and like if someone wants to play a song and then show some cool bits from it how they did it that would be really interesting I think that's a really cool idea. Anybody? Well, I already went so. Well, I mean, you might as well steal the show if nobody wants to yeah, show I anything. Went too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I could show some little bits, but I already went. Um, I mean, I could show just a couple of like simple things. Like, um, I really, really like tape start and tape stop effects, and I use them way too often. Um, and there's a lot of cool ways you can do it. Uh, and actually, all the ways that I have on my previous projects are before uh, the renders got implemented. Um, but it still works essentially the same way. So let me let me get that set up. Give me just like a minute or two to get that prepped. Yeah, that's awesome. One of the things I was gonna show, um, if nobody had anything, I have a list of you know super basic stuff, and one of them was sampling and also using the render as resampling. Uh, but if you have some stuff, that's super great. Okay, I think I think it's good. So um, yeah, uh, tape start and tape stop is as easy as taking a sample and using pitch and pitch slide. Um, so the, I have this sample here. This is actually a resampled uh, a resampled chord from MacroSynth that I just made really ethereal sounding. And what I wanted to do is to have like that pitch start effect. Um, I'm, there's a couple ways you could approach it, uh, but since I oh, there's have there's no the... audio playing. Oh, oh, let me fix that for you. That's there nothing. We... There you go. You hear it? It is too quiet. It's just too quiet. You hear that? Extremely. Yeah, I can hear it now. Okay, okay. 
So uh, yeah, uh, since I have this set of slices, just so that when I'm working on it, um, I can start in the middle of the track and set the slice. Uh, I have to find a solution to start this pitch down. So I just use pitch down. Um, one thing I, to keep in mind is to make sure that it plays back at the original pitch, uh, that the increment down and the increment up are the equal amounts. So here I just using uh, edit up and down. So that's just starts out low and then goes up high. Add a pitch slide here, and then you get a nice sound to it. Pretty cool. Popping is just part of the sample. Uh, resampling, let me find an example. I don't, did I use the one here? Uh, backspin, um, which I kind of stole from, from Tim. Uh, I didn't, uh, I, I can't quite get it to sound as good as he did, but uh, I have this section here that I'm going to play. Sorry, it's going to be super loud. Yeah. So this is just playing the sample backwards. And then I have it pitched up weird, and then I use some pitch slides to make it just kind of go bonkers. Um, but I can play the actual track if y'all. I guess that's what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so I'll I'll play a little bit of this, and then uh, yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Let me turn off my voice too. Thank you. 
yeah, that next part's not done yet, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the track. So I, you know, uh, I uh, used the render to get that last section right here bounced to one little section, and I actually um, for this next section, I actually completely round out of um, tracks to to uh, add more stuff. So I'm in the process right now of probably condensing these two sections here, which is just just some hi hats and some tambourines and down into one just to to get some more space worked out but yeah that's just something i've been working on um and yeah I, I, you you probably heard a couple instances of some some tape stop stuff and uh it, it's just as simple as just taking a sample and using both pitch and pitch slide or however uh you have your samples set up to to handle that um yeah and for anybody watching via Twitch, that was Mikey three hundred three. Um, if you want to share any of your information, oh social. yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, um, you can find me on on SoundCloud or um, probably Twitter is probably a good spot to to go. It's just Mikey three hundred three. Um, and I I post quite a bit of clips of stuff I'm working on or different ideas that I've been bouncing around in M eight. Um. The hashtag is really good if you want to see more demos of stuff that people have done. And it, and if you scroll back, you'll see a lot of the development and changes in the software. Um, it's it's a it's a f fun little timeline of, of stuff that's happened over the last, like, three months. It's pretty crazy. Um, definitely check it out. Same with Instagram. I think there's some Instagram stuff, too. But yeah, uh, that's all I got. Thanks for sharing. Um, I had another little trick and song context that I would be willing to share if that's cool. Go for it. Um, let me make sure I can see my levels. Okay. Um, so the thing okay. I wanted to share was... Um, Yeah, so I, um, I like cheesy rave pianos a lot, and being able to do, like, vampy chords and stuff, um, was really cool to me, but I didn't, um, I didn't like the way that pianos sounded when you pitch them, um, the samples at all, so I went, and I actually found this on the Orthogonal Devices Forum, somebody else made it. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, so I took it from there, but it has given me ideas for making more in the future. And the sample itself is, um, every single key on a piano sampled and then spaced an equal num an equal amount of time apart. I'm not going to play more than that. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, and so basically I just load it in. And I do 88 slices, and that means that um, the lowest 88 notes are uh, each uh, recorded key from an actual piano. So it gives you a pretty good um, piano sound. And then I think for this song, to make it a little bit crustier, I went in and I use the handy sample editor to um, make it mono and 8-bit, maybe downsampled it a little bit just to give it a little bit more crust. Um, but it lets you do chords like that. I actually was planning on rendering that down and using that just on one track, but it ended up fitting in the song. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit of this song. Um, yeah.
the music of yourself. It's the music of the earth. The music of the sun and the stars. The music of yourself. It's the music of the earth. The music of the sun and the stars. The music of yourself. That's, uh, yeah, that's, so that's the second song that I um, have finished on this amazing little thing. Uh, my socials on Instagram and SoundCloud is um, XLLTHX, and then on Twitter it's XXLLTHXX. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for checking out my little song. Thanks for sharing. So, um, does anybody have anything else to share? Um, if not, uh, we could always call it at uh, the two hour mark and go again next week. Maybe we should do it that way, huh? I have a lot of stuff I, c I could share, but uh, as far as tips, but I figure I might as well just space them out if we're going to do this once a week or not. Um, maybe uh, next time around, I don't know if we should maybe pick a topic or if anybody has any input on how we should kind of do this or just keep it a free for all. Like, I'm open to ideas. I think a FM centered one maybe would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, having some uh, the instrument specific talks would be really cool. So we could go in depth on wave synth, how to really utilize that engine, you know, in comparison to the other engine. And that kind of, uh, you could do one on like hardware and how to. Uh, set up MIDI stuff, how to get your instruments in, and all that good. 
Um, I would really love to see somebody who is really well versed in FM, like kind of take us through the problem solving aspect of the sound design, because that's still something I'm very much like kind of a do at. And to see somebody like just put all the little like, you know, all the little strategies in place to get to the sound that they think that they want, uh, that would be really helpful. Once I, once I get my hands on an M8, my immediate thinking is to try and like do some crazy FM based shit like on Ableton, but like do it in a, do it on the M8. So as soon as I get my hands, I'm going to, I'm going to try and like reverse engineer how to, how to get some good sounds out of that. I mean, yeah, that's basically all I've been doing lately. It's just like taking patches that I want in M8 and just copying and pasting them that way. But as far as like yeah. how to get, a xylophone, you know, uh, I, I, there's ways, there's ways to do that. There's ways of thinking about it. Um, but you know, at the same time, there is also a little bit of trial and error. So, but yeah, that could definitely be a cool topic to go around. I don't know if that's How, worthy um, of a whole, of a sorry. whole, of a whole meetup or not, but yeah. Uh, how complex is the, uh, is the FM in, uh, on the M8, like, would it be complex enough to like import patches from like other synths, maybe? M8, like, is, eventually down the line. M8 is a a four op four operator FM synth. So, for instance, when I when I transcribe things from say DX7, which is six operator to M8, what I end up having to do is to basically mute parts of the algorithm to figure out which parts are essential for that sound. Um, and most most basic patches that you're familiar with, like, you know, the E-Piano 1 from the DX7 or, you know, l the Lately Bass and that kind of stuff, like, you could do all that in a 4-op FM just as easily as a 6-op. It's just not as, um, depending on the patch, it might not be as thick sounding. Gotcha, word. But yeah, that's the primary limitation of M8's um, FM synth. I mean, there's other little ones, but pr the primary thing is there's only so much you could do with four operators versus something like a DX7 that has um, six operators or something like a FS1R that has 16 operators. You know, there's only so complex, so many complex waveforms you can make with that. But uh, yeah, unless anybody else has any questions, um, let me see here. I think that's it for me. Yeah, I'm just reading uh, if there's any other questions. Just to be sure this thing can actually control external synths like a tracker based sequencer. Yes, of course. It has basically an instrument type that is a MIDI out type. And in that type, you have your you have all the basic things that you would you would want. Um, you could control, define, and control up to ten CCs, um, and the um, program change and the bank and the MIDI channel. So, by using instruments, you are basically limited to uh, the eight tracks that are there. So it could be an eight track MIDI sequencer if you wanted to, where it wouldn't be creating any sound at all. Um, there's also commands for doing chords on the MIDI out. So you can kind of get away with a lot there. But yeah, maybe that's another topic we should cover at some point too. It would be cool to have like a show and tell specifically for just ways that people use and abuse that technology or that, yeah, that, that feature. Um, Cause that would be really inspiring, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think this, this, Obviously, this first time around, it's like, hey, let's just do this thing. Let's just all get together and have a conversation and show each other things that where we can, you know, and kind of build out what we can from that, take away from that. And maybe, I don't know. I don't I don't know if we prefer this free for all or a topic specific thing, you know, or maybe two topics. I don't I don't know. Um, I also didn't know how many of us would actually be wanting to show. So. But I think it would also be cool to like show some tracks, like give people an opportunity to show what they've done on the unit, you know. 
So maybe next time around there should be a little bit more structure, and if people have songs they want us to share, like um, we could do that here. I think that's an excellent idea. I'll um, try and put together some little demos and maybe uh, think of some more uh, cool tricks like the one I did today and have a little demo that I could share so people could really take a closer look at it after it's been presented. Yeah, I don't know if I should like, because right now I'm streaming it to Trash 80s, to my, <laughs> to my uh, Twitch channel. I don't know if we should maybe just stream it to like Dirty Waves YouTube channel. Um, I just did my channel cause it was easy to set up and there's some people already following it. So I know we'd, we'd at least get more than just our, our normal discord group in on it. I think there's a way that you can do multi-stream. Yeah. I'm just not an expert with Twitch to be honest with you. So I don't, I don't know necessarily how to set that up, but if somebody wants to contact me and give me ideas on, on what we should do moving forward, that'd also be cool. And with that, I think if we don't have any other questions or things we want to chat about this time around, um, we could call it. Yeah, I think that was great. Thank you, everybody who shared and tuned in. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, everybody, and have a great weekend.